Hello, in this video, I'm going to be taking you through my entire website building process from start to finish. And whether you're a beginner web designer or somebody with years of experience, my goal for this video is to show you my process and how I get websites done for my clients. Before we dive in, my name is Dylan Davino. I'm the founder of Davino Digital. We're an agency that specializes in website design, development, SEO, and social media marketing. Over the past two years, I have scaled my agency from $0 a month all the way up to $10,000 this month. And I'm super excited to share this video because we've had the privilege of working with a ton of different clients and I feel like we've honed our process to make it pretty smooth and pretty effective. So I know building a website can be a pretty daunting task, at least I know it was when I started my agency, but in this video I'm going to break down into 8 different phases how you can build a website from start to finish for your clients. So step number 1 is planning, researching, and onboarding. So obviously when you first get started on a project, you want to have researched what the company does, you want to know generally what their industry is all about, and then specifically uh, what are the owners all about, uh, what's the company's values, you want to make sure you've done all of your research and have a good understanding of this. On top of that, it's really helpful to do market research depending on the industry that you're working with. If you aren't familiar with the industry, um, if you don't know any of their competitors, that would be a great thing to check out. Go and look at all their competitors' websites, look at how they're performing and what differentiates them. And when it comes to onboarding, just make sure that you have everything you need to get the project done. Now onboarding can be a little bit tricky and it comes with practice, but you need to make sure that in the very beginning of the project you get everything you need to complete the project. So this would include all of their images, videos, content, flyers, menus, graphics, um, brand guidelines, anything and everything that they have you need to be able to use in building this website. So that wraps up step one, planning, researching, and onboarding. Just remember that proper planning prevents poor performance, so this is one of the most crucial aspects in doing the job right. Step number two is wireframing and design. So you always want to design and create a visual mockup or a sketch of the site before you go ahead and start developing it. And I commonly get asked, what's the difference between design and development, and why do you design before developing? Think about this like a house. Would you want to just put up a house without any blueprint, without any architecture work done? Probably not. Um, when it comes to building a house, you want to have a whole blueprint created in a design before you start putting things up. And this is the same when it comes to building a website. You want to have the design completed to make sure that you're going to get what you want and that the client will be happy with the end result. In the design process, you want to use a tool like Figma and you want to create a cohesive brand identity and this really helps if you're a creative person. This is when you're working on the color schemes, uh, all of the design aspects of the site to make sure that it's visually appealing and meets the brand's guidelines. Step number three is development. So this is when you take that design and you move it into a tool that builds websites. So there are a lot of platforms out there for building websites. Just to name a couple, you have WordPress, Squarespace, Wix, Weebly, Webflow, Shopify, um, there's tons of them out there. Um, personally, at Divino Digital, we like to use Webflow and Shopify. Those are our top picks. But, you know, that's not to say that any platform is better than another. Uh, maybe they are, maybe they aren't. That's for you to decide. But I know that every platform has its own strengths and weaknesses. And in case you do want to learn more about web design platforms, I definitely have recorded a bunch of videos talking about different platforms, so you could definitely go check those out. And before we move into step number four, um, I do want to ask you to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. I'm really close to a thousand subscribers. Um, and also, I'm posting a lot of content on Instagram right now because I'm doing a digital nomad thing traveling around the country. And so if you want to follow that and get uh, behind the scenes looks, definitely go give me a follow. All right, step number four is content creation. So obviously, you don't have a website without content and a lot of web designers have different beliefs about whether they should provide content for the client. Um, some web designers charge extra for copywriting, some don't even do it at all. Um, at my agency, Divino Digital, we do provide the client with copy, um, but we aren't necessarily giving them you know, the most personal copy. We're giving them something as a starting point, 
um, because I find that I would rather give them something to start with than just lorem ipsum or filler text. I think it's really helpful for a client to see what the text could look like or should look like and then they could personalize it if they want to, um, but I don't want to leave my clients with nothing to work with. Okay, step number five is integrations and SEO. So I kind of jumbled a lot into this one step here, um, but this is basically after you've developed the site, uh, you want to make sure that you've done a lot of the SEO things as well as the uh, integrations that might be useful for your business. So when it comes to integrations, you want to start thinking about social media feeds. Uh, you can have social media feeds go straight to your website whenever you make a post. I know my clients are a huge fan of that feature. Um, you can also integrate your CRM depending on what CRM you use and that would make it a lot easier for you to track the leads that you're getting and convert them into sales. This is also a great time to focus on some SEO things like adding title tags and meta descriptions um, which is kind of like the thumbnail when it comes to Google. Uh, when you make a Google search, this is all of the blue links that pop up. You want to make sure that you've written a good title tag and meta description so people actually click the website in the first place. And one more thing I'll mention before moving on to the next one is Google Analytics. This is a great time to install Google Analytics, which is a tool that basically tracks all of the data on your website. So it can track how many people are on your website on any given day, where are the people coming from, uh, what did they search in order to find you, or did they come from social media, how long are they spending on your site. Um, these are all examples of things that Google Analytics has, um, and it's a very, very powerful tool that you do not want to skip out on. So those are some of the main things that you want to consider when it comes to integrations in SEO. Now there's definitely a lot more I could talk about, but I don't want to go on for an hour and it depends on the client to be honest. So uh, I'll move on to step number six with that being said. Okay, step number six is quality assurance. Now this is when you want to go through the site, go through every single page, check all of the links, um, check all of the content, make sure that everything is working the way it's supposed to, uh, it looks great, it functions well, uh, the, the page is mobile optimized which means that it works on desktop, laptop, and mobile devices. These are all examples of things that you want to get done in the quality assurance and this is not a step that you want to skip either. Um, I find that if you don't do quality assurance you might have missed a couple things and you don't really want errors on your clients websites, it's just not a good look. Uh, I always hold my agency up to a very high standard when it comes to building websites. Step number seven is pre-launch and I coined this term myself um, but this is basically one more step before you hit the launch button. Um, you need to make sure that you've backed up the site so make sure that you've backed up the old site and the new site that you're actually going to be working with. Um, this is because you don't want to lose any data. I mean it would suck to publish a new site and then lose the old one or to lose a previous version of the new site if it stopped working for some reason. Um, so backing up your site is always a very great thing to do. And then another thing you can do in pre-launch would be start to look at your 301 redirects. Um, if you are transitioning from an old site to a new site, you want to make sure that none of the links are changing because if you have a link that suddenly um, is no longer on the new site, it'll just be brought to a dead page. And so say somebody linked to you on that dead page, they'll click on the link on some article and then it will bring them nowhere. So 301 redirects, very important. Um, go watch a video on that if you're curious about it as well. And lastly, this is a great time to get access to the domain if you have not already. Um, so you, you technically wanna get access to the domain in the onboarding phase and you should be doing it early on in the project. Um, but if you have not gotten it yet, now is the time because the next step is going to be launching the website. Step number eight is launching the website. Now, launching a website involves a few different things and this is quite a technical thing to understand. Um, I'm going to describe it in the way I describe it to clients, uh, although it can get a little bit technical and so stick with me. So when it comes to websites, a domain is the name of the site. So DavinoDigital.com, that is the domain of my website. Um, and then you also have hosting. Now, hosting is what you attach to that domain to allow the website to be on the internet. So you pay a small fee for domains. You pay uh, about $12 a year for an average domain on Google domains, and that's to basically be the owner of that domain. And then hosting has a separate fee, which is a monthly fee to keep the website up and running. 
depending on the platform, it could be anywhere from $5 a month to $30 a month for Webflow, um, all the way up to $1 or $200 a month for platforms like Shopify or Magento. So definitely try to convey that to the client. Make sure they understand um, what they're paying for because you don't want to have somebody that's upset that they're paying a monthly fee for hosting. They think they're paying you, but in reality, they're just paying the fee to keep the website up and running. And lastly, now that you've launched the website, um, congratulations, you made it through all of the phases of the website building process. Now is also a great time to offer additional services. So the first service you might want to offer the client is website management. Since you created the website and you know the website platform better than anybody else, you are the perfect person to help them manage that website. Now, what does that entail? So at my agency, website management entails website updates, revisions, making sure it's always up and running. So that means making sure the hosting and the security is always up to date. On top of that, we can do consistent backups of the site to make sure we don't lose any valuable information. So if you think the client might want help with managing this website over the long term, now would be a great time to bring it up. Another service that you could potentially offer is SEO. SEO is the optimization of the website. So website management is more of a surface level uh, service where you're just taking care of the website, keeping it you know, up to date. Whereas SEO is really going above and beyond to optimize the website in order to go for more clicks, more leads, and more sales. SEO takes a little bit longer than you know some other marketing like Google Ads, for example. You turn on Google Ads and you immediately have people going to the site. Uh, although SEO is about getting to the top searches on Google and you're going to be getting more searches organically, more clicks organically versus paying per click. And lastly, you could offer social media marketing if you want to help the client manage their Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, or YouTube. At my agency, whenever I build a website, we typically will begin that website management campaign and we will also typically help them out with either SEO or social media marketing. Well, there you have it. That's my full website building process from start to finish. If you found this video helpful, please remember to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because I want to hit 1,000 subscribers. And one more thing, if you want to follow my Instagram for more digital nomad content, uh, definitely follow me at Dylan underscore Davino. And with all that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.